In the circle we are told that O is the center. Now the first question asks us to determine the angle of A1, which is over here. Now I always advise people to pause the video and attempt it themselves first, because there's usually more than one way to do this, and I don't want you to just sit there and watch how I do it, because you might be able to do it yourself, and that builds a lot of confidence in terms of how you feel when doing maths. So a nice way to start, if you can't see anything straight away, is to look at the angle A1 and to try see which lines formed A1. So what we do is we start off at A and we work our way backwards until we hit the edge, okay? So there we hit the edge at D, and if we work our way along this line, sorry, this line over here, we get to C. Okay, so D and C comes together at A. Now, where else does D and C come together? Well, if you go from C and you go along here, and if you go from D, you get to this part over here. Okay, so this whole angle of B also comes from D and C. And because of angles in the same segment, we could say that A1 is the same as this angle over here. However, we don't know what B1 is. But then if we look in this triangle, we could find some interesting things. First of all, what do we know about the length of OC and OB? Well, those are going to be equal because if you have a bicycle wheel, for example, and you've got all these spokes going from the center, well, it's clear to see that those lengths are all going to be the same. So step one would be to say that OC has the same length as OB. That's because they are both radiuses, but we don't say radiuses. The correct word is radii. Therefore, we can say that angle C1 is going to be the same as angle B1. Why? Because if you have a triangle which has two sides that have the same length, then those two angles that are opposite those sides also have the length, same length, sorry, also have the same angle. And so what we can say is that we have equal angles, so what that means is the angles are equal when they are opposite equal sides. So it's you have equal angles when your angles are opposite equal sides. Now we already know that angle O is 100, that means that C1 and B1 together need to give you 80, right? Because all three angles in a triangle must add up to 180. So that means that C1 and B1 will each have to be 40. Because if C1 and B1 are 40, then that's 40 plus 40, which is 80, plus the 100, which is already there at angle O, to give a total of 180. So C1 and B1 are both 40, and the reason is sum of angles in a triangle. Let me just make a space there, like that. Now why is that useful? Well, B1 then has an, an angle of 40, and it's useful because we said that angle A1 is the same as this whole angle over here, remember? Because they come from the same, they both come from line DC. So just rewind if you've forgotten that part. And so we were busy trying to find A1, and so we can say that A1 is gonna be equal to 60 degrees, because remember we said that A1 comes from D and C, and so does B, it also comes from D and C. And so there was a video we watched a while back that had to do with angles in the same segment, and that's the reason for this one. So we can say angles in the same segment. And we typically don't write out the whole word segment, we just say in same seg. So we've done question one. Question two would like us to find the angle G, which is this one over here. So what you could maybe try to do is work from G backwards until you hit some point. And so if you go along that line, you get to C. And if you go along this line over here, you get to A. So now we need to look at A and C. Does A and C form any other angles? Well, not really, because I mean, we could go this way to get to D, but that's not correct. Be due to the fact that if we look at the line AC, that is a line that divides the circle into a segment below the purple line and a segment above the purple line. And angle G and angle D are on opposite sides, and so you can't use that theorem. That theorem only works if the two angles are on the same side 
of the purple line. That's why we call the theory angles in the same segment. But there is still going to be a relationship between G and D. Have a look here. If we look at this shape here, well, that's automatically a cyclic quad because it's a four-sided shape and each corner touches the circle. So we know that angle D and angle G, well, they have to add up to 180 because the opposite sides of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. Problem is we don't have D. But what if we looked in this triangle over here? Because we already know the value of A1. We said that the value of A1 is 60 degrees. And so in that purple triangle, we can get D1 and D2 as a whole because we know that all three angles should add up to 180. So we can say that angle D should equal to 180 minus 60 minus 40. And the reason for that is sum of angles in a triangle. And so if you go work out D, you're going to get a value of 80 degrees. And so that means that angle G is going to equal to 100 degrees because it's a cyclic, remember we said there's a cyclic quadrilateral and opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral must add up to 180. So we can say op angles of cyclic quad. And then some teachers will add the word sup over there just to say supplementary. Supplementary means equal or adds up to 180 degrees.